Oops. Not yet. The nine ten. There you go. Um. So I, for the two-hour study, I really wanted to um, have us use like a master's book. Um, why I chose this mountain is because it's a landscape that really pushes the shadow. So this is going to um, really help you understand that the shadow does reflect the light. And if you can incorporate those that understanding into every single one of your paintings and not be afraid to really push your shadows, your, um, your paintings are going to have a lot more depth. A lot more feel, a lot more uh, like uh, it's it's going to register a lot more successfully. Uh, yes, I find I don't personally focus enough on shadows, and that's something that I really wanted to um, help you guys all do, um, as well as going to be mixing a lot of different color. Um, we're gonna have like probably three or four different shadows. Um, mixes for this one just because uh, the variety it'll help it look like that's what helps it look like there's like clouds or sun breaking clouds um and some clouds are like thicker than others and whatnot um it's really going to i think help you guys have a foundational ground and that's what this class is about about building up our foundation so that we can take our previous learning knowledge apply it to this work is by Harry Yunani Shadan uh in France. That's in France. Um he does he focuses a lot on landscapes and I really find he has a very strong um sense of shadow and I wanted to explore that with you guys. This is a lot of color, yes. Do we have any questions before we get? Okay. We're going to be starting very light and then slowly building and building and building. By the end of the class, it's okay if you guys don't like it because every single painting goes to that awkward teenage stage where nobody likes it. Okay. Um, and we will begin, is the music too loud? Okay, cool. So we will begin by just sketching out lines as to where, um, the mountain peaks are, as well as, um, maybe a little bit of the foreground and some rough lines of where the trees go okay so this piece is from the art of watercolor yeah i like these uh issues they're uh they help me think outside my like watercolor artist box if you will all right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line right up here um, of where this foreground is. Um, I'm kind of dividing, I'm looking at the entire length of this painting and where this comes to. This comes to roughly say even lower probably right here um it doesn't cover very much of the painting at all and then if this is the halfway mark it's like just before the halfway mark so if this is the halfway mark this is probably where it is so now i can go in 
and then just like roughly create a rough line shape. Do I need to press darker with my line? No? Okay. Why is there bagpipes? Weird. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to go back to it? <laughs> it was just very loud. <laughs> Okay, so the next one that I'm going to do is roughly where the top of this ridge goes. So if I'm looking at it, I can see that it's at the halfway mark on the right-hand side. So if you guys look at your own reference. Uh, <laughs> As Dahlia's going, if your paper is the same size, feel free to cheat. <laughs> there you go. My painting is like way too small for that. You know what? We are recreating another person's painting. We're already cheating. <laughs> Okay, so this one is about halfway. So I'm gonna find where the half mark is here. I'm just gonna make a little knot here. And then this guy over here, when I come to this edge, is like almost two thirds up, a little bit lower. So I'm probably gonna go about right here. And I'm comparing these two and just making sure they're like a little bit offset. I think I like that. And then this mountain ridge ends at the halfway point. So if I go to my halfway point right there, that's where my, the, this lower mountain ridge is going to end. And then this one is going to like dip into it behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to freehand this mountain ridge, just taking, noticing how many peaks it's got one, maybe two peaks. And I'm just going to kind of freehand it. It doesn't have to look ex identical. I kind of don't want it to look identical. I just want the feel of it. So about right there. Okay, so this comes in. Then it goes up into a point. Okay. But I, what I am paying attention to is the height. I don't want, the mountain peaks can differ, but the height can't because then that's going to break this composition. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going down and then I'm gonna go up to about right here. Uh, oh, look at me making this way too long. Okay. This happens all the time with me. Okay, so that's going to come up. Okay, that I'm happy with. I'm almost happy with it. <laughs> this is the problem with um, copying like somebody else's artwork is that I tend to uh, get super hyper critical about exactly how my lines look and stuff. And then on the other side, so I have this mountain ridge right here. There it 
Yep. So then on the other side, it's too loud. Okay. So then on the other side, it kind of like blends, it kind of tucks behind this other one right here. And then I'm looking at this peak. This peak is about, I would say right, this is at the highest point of it is right here. So I'm trying to find the highest point and then I'm trying to find out where in my painting the highest point is. And I would say probably this area right here. So we got about a third in and a little bit above two thirds up. And then there's like a hint of a mountain behind it. And then it comes up and peeks out. And then there's like three peaks. There's like one, two, three. Lilia, if you find a reference that you like for next week, you can bring one in and try it out, and then I can like guide you through it too. If you really don't like this painting, okay. Well, this is a beginner class, and I feel like watercolor mountains are just like a milestone, <laughs> you know. Everyone's got to do one. Okay, the last one that I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating a general line of where this darkness is that will help me define where this light is. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for a line. I'm going to create a line that kind of like follows the line of this tree before it starts going up and breaking apart. Does that make sense? So I'm look I'm going to kind of create like this line right here. Um and if I put my finger there, I can tell that there needs to be quite a bit of like white space. So when I look at my painting, yeah, yeah. Some So I'm looking here at where it's like below the halfway point. So I'm also looking, I'm comparing the space between this as well as overall how large it is on my paper. So I would say it's about right here. That's about right. And then down here, goes to like right there. So then I'm just gonna kind of create a curved line in between the two. Good enough. So now I know where my tree line is. All right, and that's all the drawing I'm gonna do. Anyone have any questions before we begin? Okay, cool.
So now we can get into our painting. Yeah, if they are dark, yes, because this painting is incredibly light. But also, if you guys want like a really good example of what the pencil marks look like through your painting, you can add it on. Um, as I grow older, I don't so much care about the, like I kind of want to see pencil marks with other people's artwork just because it gives me an idea of their like thought process behind it. And I don't mind the way that it looks. Right, exactly. And I think it adds a layer of depth to the painting as well. I'm going to do so just because I've been telling you guys to do it throughout the entire uh, class. So might as well end it with the last painting as well. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do is we are going to mix colors. And I think I'm going to mix this blue shadow, like right over here and in here, I'm looking at kind of the lightest shadow color that we have. And I feel like this would be a really good way to start and to start carving out your shadowed areas. So I'm looking right here. This is probably the color over in this little area that I'm going to go and that looks like a purplish blue shadow very very light so I um well I want to, I'm taking my lightest shadow because I want to start creating um, the, like, I want to mark down the areas that the painting is. Because this painting is very dependent on the white of the paper, it, to define it, I want to start marking down where my paint is going to go and the subject is going to go. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to mix together, I'm going to take my ultramarine blue, put them here. Um, a cobalt blue would be equivalent. Taking my ultramarine blue and then I'm mixing it with my alizarin crimson. Start getting um I'm kind of like eyeballing it so I I put in my blue and then I'm slowly adding my alizarin crimson until I get the color that I'm looking for yep a cold purple yes so I find that Anytime. Yeah. Um, so that I would just grab the tiniest little bit of color because there's such heavy pigments when you're using tube. You have to really be super gentle with the amount of paint that you pick up. And I always start with the blue because blue overpowers everything. So I start with a blue base and then I slowly warm it up with my yes. reds. Any colors you start like if you're using blue, you always start with blue. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Unless I'm just adding a hint of blue kind of thing. If I'm like, oh, this is a little bit too warm, I need to cool this, gray this out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of um what is this? Burnt sienna. So like a brown color, just a hint of it. There we go. That's a really nice shadow color. Sorry. And when I'm looking at my color 
when I'm looking at my color palette, I'm looking at the areas where my paint is the lightest because that's what I'm going, that's the color that I'm looking for that I'm going to be painting with. Yeah, absolutely. A bluish gray, yes. And I find adding browns into your uh, shadow colors really helps give them a sense of life. Just because the reflection of the sun and then like the reflection of the objects around it and whatnot. Like um, before when I was teaching you, I was letting you, telling you guys to um, like use a darker version of the color that we were using before, like our main color. But um, over the weekend, I read that like really for really impactful shadows is to like mix a whole bunch of different like shadow colors. So that's kind of what we're experimenting with right now. This is new for me too, so. All right, so now with, uh, I got a wet brush, so I'm wetting it and then I'm just um, scraping off any excess and I'm picking up just a little bit of my color with the tip of my brush. I'm not saturating the whole thing, just a little bit with the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to start. So you know what? We're going to do, we're going to wet the whole paper a bit. Not soaking it, but I want to kind of wet it a little bit first because I'm noticing that there's a lot of softness with these shadows and I'm not, I'm not paying attention to make sure all of my paper is soaked. I'm just kind of like allowing there to be parts that are dry but also I want this, uh, I want my paper to be damp right now because this base color, I really want it to like spread a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not like going out of my way to make sure that it's like fully saturated completely. So now that I've added a layer of water and it's very dry, like it's, it's not soaked. I'm going to start adding a little bit of my color to it. So I'm carving out this area right here. And that's all, that's even like too dark for me. So I'm gonna move that around a bit. Go. And then I'm getting this air, this one right here. I'm moving on to this area. And it all comes to like this point. Spreading because it's wet on wet. It's a lot wetter. That's okay. Yeah. Like spreading. Yes. Like right. Um, mine isn't soaked. I just wet it real fast. Yeah. Correct. I'm I'm looking at these peaks, so I'm following this mountain ridge to get this mountain and just adding in like hints of where my mountain is going to be, where my low lights are. Does that make sense? And really take your time with this guys because we have two classes for this. If we can leave today with everything blocked out of where our colors are going to be, I'll be happy. Make sense? Of like, if we can start out with like, yeah, basically like blocks of color of where everything's going to be. That's all I'm looking for today. Eight. 
And if you guys need to as well, you guys could like go over and just be like, okay, so here's here. And then this, this like mountain ridge comes out around here. So then it would like, feel free to like take your painting and really compare, compare it to yours. It would, and you're absolutely correct. And I think that's my mistake, honestly. <laughs> you're good. I'm also I'm also tired. So that's where my brain's at as well. I think we're in the same place. Um, that is all, definitely an approach. This is just the first one. So like, I'm not looking for details. I'm just looking in to carve out where my mountains are specifically and then I'll probably go over and allow my sky to bleed into the mountains since it's the first layer and then I can blade over top of it everyone approaches a painting differently this uh this class is really showing you my only my um way of approaching a painting that's perfectly okay you do you do it the way you want to that's the nice thing about a lot of these uh, magazines too, is um, many of them offer like step-by-steps of like how this artist went through their process. And that in itself will teach you quite a bit kind of thing. I think for um, the next semester, um, I have a lot of these hanging around and there's various like different styles and stuff. So I really wanted to try like various styles of like watercolor painting. Like this is very cool. I have never done this in my life um kind of thing so like kind of more this impressionist style so um i think for my next class um because it's all levels i'm going to like kind of more experiment with various like famous and masters of watercolor and try to like replicate those kind of thing and that in itself will teach you a ton yeah that one was one that i saw that i was like wow I don't know how to do that. That's interesting. The colors are very rich. Well, this is actually a step-by-step -step right here of this painting. So you can see that, yeah. And then over top of it. Yeah. yeah no this is a dry brush for sure uh this step is wet on wet it looks like kind of half and half it looks like what they were doing with where i did here where i put the the um i put my color on and then kind of used water to pull it around i think that's what they were doing with that yeah so that's one of the paintings i'm going to do with my next semester Okay, so for this one, let's continue. And if you don't want to follow my process, don't. If you don't want to follow the step-by-step, -step, feel free to go do whatever you want to do. We're, we're right now building up light to dark. Okay, and then this one over here, oh, that's too dark. <laughs> I'm sorry? I'm just doing the mountains right now. You can do whatever you want to do, but if you want to follow along, I'm just doing the mountains right now. Yes. Um, I've created a shadow color that is a mixture of like blue, red, and brown. Do you want help mixing your color? Yep. So it's uh, I started with my blue, and then I added red until I got like um, like a really cold blue, like almost a gray. 
And then I added brown and that twisted it to an even warmer gray. Okay, cool. So I'm getting lost in this right now, so I'm not going to tackle that just yet. Right here, this middle area is is giving me some trouble. So I'm going to start, I'm going to move on to right here and then do this. And then this will be like the last part that I do with Mountain Ridge because that's going to take me some time to like really work my way through. Yes. Okay. Because I'm using very, very, very small amounts of water. So first off, I have to use my brush very um, I would try. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I would try. So I would try really um, becoming familiar with how wet the duct is and how little. Okay, so. Yes. Yeah, Oh, it's mostly gray. Ah, yeah, I see. I see. Just because it's like that. Oh, yeah, I see. Well, okay. And then when you put it on, this. Oh, when you, <laughs> when you put it on, make sure that your paint, your paintbrush is fairly wet when you take out your, your color. Okay. 
Everyone is on a good path. Oh, I love this color. Okay. So what I'm learning by walking around you guys is I'm way too precise. <laughs> so I'm going to bust through this. So I'm putting down my color and then it's almost too dark right there. So now I'm going to like bleed it out and spread it around. Yep, you definitely can if you want. Um, pay attention to where on your painting it is, or you can go into the sky. The sky is going to be wet on wet. That's the nice thing about this long two hour painting is that it does give you guys the opportunity to go at your own pace and to, and along with giving you guys the reference, it also allows you guys to kind of figure it out for yourself, if you will. But then if you get stuck or you get lost, or if you just need someone to hold your hand, you can totally follow along with me. And this is a closer way to how I learned how to paint the watercolor was um, a lot more of like me kind of figuring out for myself and then my teacher walking around and offering tips and tricks along the way. So I learned trial by fire basically. <laughs> Okay, so then this piece comes out here. And this is like a mountain ridge in and of itself. And then it curves around. And then while I'm down here, I'm ever so lightly going. Actually, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to just color that in. Right now, I'm just blocking out my shapes.
Okay, this is starting to make sense to me now. Okay, so this is my first layer, my shadow layer. It's starting to make sense to me. So I can tell that like these are peaks. This is a ridge right here. This is the edge of a ridge. These are lines of like motion. This right here is a deep valley. And then here is some really heavy. Um, so I can like pinpoint individual parts of my mountain now. That makes sense how I did that and why I did that. So, so long as it makes sense to you, I think one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was a rookie is I just kind of painted without understanding what was happening within my paint. And then so I get lost and then I have to do muddy edges kind of. Thing. So being able to define where your feet are, like look, that's why I went around and specifically was like, okay, so this is like a ridge, and then this is like a valley right here, and then this is another high point. That's why I went around and identified it so that in my head. I would start understanding what was happening because I found that my paintings, my more unsuccessful paintings were when I was lost and couldn't, and didn't really know what I was aiming for. And was just like, I'm just going to keep on applying paint until it looks good. And it turns out it never looks good. Does that make sense? So understanding your mountains and what your intention for that specific area is, is key. And even if it's not the same as the, the reference photo, that's fine. It doesn't matter. So long as it, what's important is that it makes sense to you. And you make it your own. The more you make something your own, or you're going to understand it, and it's going to, you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. So, no bigger person to say, no painting is exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. What don't you like about that? Did you know what? Are you lost in your painting? Yes. So, um, so I would use this as a guide more than anything, and it's more important that you understand what your painting is, that it's not that makes sense. So I would take really, um, I would take like marks on here and be like, okay, so this is going to be a so then this is going to be darker, and then this is also going to be um, this is a bridge here, so that's perfect. And then the, this is just like the end right here. And then this again is like shadow here. Yeah. So start defining it for yourself and then building it up as to how you want to see it. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay. That answer the issue that you were having? 
Oh, play with it. Play, 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 play. Um, also, if you need to put it out here. So you want to use this to make more money? My house looks a lot like this, where it's uh, or it looks like a, a a collection of recycled trash <laughs> for like mixing pallets and stuff. I use the. Uh, Whenever I order sushi, it comes in like one of those like containers, and I always use those for mixing my acrylics and stuff. And uh, these, uh, what you are using right here, this is like a really good option, but I also use this for prepping, for marking, because if you, uh, if you like cut down into this and then put like over top of it, and then you. Uh, I collect recycled trash. Yeah. Yep. There's also that gun chunk. It's called them Yeah. Okay, so now that I have my mountain peaks and like my where my shadows are and more understanding. I think what I'm gonna do is go in for the sky. I think I'm gonna do the sky. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to mix this beautiful, rich purple color. I'm going to mix, I'm going to ma make this a combination of various shadows. So I'm going to use the shadow that we already created. I'm going to create a, more of a purple shadow color and I'm going to make sure I have some burnt sienna and some like cobalt blue within my painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix that really beautiful, rich purple color that I'm looking for. So I'm taking my ultramarine or cobalt blue, putting it down. If anybody's curious, this is the palette that I started with. Like, these are the paints that I started with. I just haven't, like, there's certain ones I haven't used more than others, like this uh, Viridian Green I rarely use. But it actually mixes a really nice color if you for a shadow, which I'm learning. But yeah, these are the original paints colors. I'm mixing this, like, nice blue shadow color. So I'm mixing my uh, cobalt blue with my ultramarine, sorry, nope, alizarin crimson. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. So it's like the same mixture as the other one, but like less gray. There you go. You get your bagpipes back. Bagpipes back. That's amazing. Yep. I want it a little warmer. Oh my god, my lizard and crimson. Every time I dip my paintbrush in there, just so much lizard and crimson. Okay, that is the color that I'm happy with. So it's like more of a warmer purple. Actually, I'm making it a little bit warmer still. There we go. And I'm kind of just doing this until it feels right to me. Okay. 
So now that I have my shadow colors, I'm also going to take some of my alizarin crimson, put him in its own little palette so that I'm not going directly into my alizarin crimson. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow as well, of yellow ochre, just because I feel like that might be really nice in there. Um, and a little bit of actual alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson and some of my cobalt blue too. I'm just kind of putting these colors off to the side so that Oh man, my that was dirty as hell. Um, I'm kind of putting my colors off to the side so that um I don't go directly into my paint. There we go. That's nicer. So I have a lot of color mixed here, and then I have a little bit of color right here so that I can go in and kind of just grab because um I don't like how little control I have when I go right into my paints. Does that make sense? So I like um I like putting them in their own little um paint palette area so that I'm not going directly from the source. I'm going from it gives me a lot more control of how much or how little paint to pick up. If that makes sense. Makes sense to me. <laughs> but again, you're only getting an idea of my process. I always encourage people if they don't feel like they can get anything from me because my teaching style is like everyone learns from different teaching styles right so if you aren't getting that much from me or you want to try and see what other people's teaching styles are like by all means please go do that I encourage you to do that okay so now with the sky I'm going real nice and wet and I'm not being super careful that I'm avoiding my ridges because the um, the sky is going to reflect off of the mountains. So I'm not being super careful. All right, it's nice and wet now. Now I'm going to go in and I'm first going to do that top ridge. Yeah. And have fun with the sky. It's very wet on wet. This is always where I have like a ton of fun. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my secondary color, which is more of that mountain color that we mixed. I'm going to darken up some areas. And since this is wet on wet, everyone's is going to look totally different.
I'm excited for you guys to get to the point where you can like see, you can look at the shine of your paper and know how it's going to spread. That's always an exciting air time to get to. I'm going to add in my light areas with my cobalt. Whoa, that's so dark. Okay, let's spread that around. Ultramarine will work very, very lightly. You said, what was the other color? Indigo? I have no idea what that looks like. I would... Yeah, I'm going to come over and, like, see what that looks like, because I'm curious. I've always worked with a very, like, limited palette, so... um. I actually learn what <laughs> what various shades look like through you guys. I'm kind of married to the colors that I have at this point. Correct. Yes. Because it would uh, force me to mix my own colors. Yeah. You just need two, you need a cold, a hot, you need a warm primary and a cold primary. So you'd need like a warm blue and a cold blue, a warm red, a cold red, and a warm yellow and a cold yellow kind of thing. Yep. Ooh, amazing. Have you ever painted with Indian ink? Okay. Oh, lovely. Um, you can use it like watercolor. Yeah, you just add, keep on adding water to it. Yep. Yep. And black is never just black. You know, it's mixed with blue, it's mixed with green, because it absorbs the light around it. So if you're doing like a black, it's a very, black is a very like man-made color. Yes. Yeah. So like out in nature, black always has like a little bit of what it's reflecting around it. So like greens or blues or like yellows kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. I don't know my way around acrylics. You'd be able to teach me some things with acrylics. Yeah, that would be the stage I'm in as well. Blue or blue. Uh, what's your reference point? Is blue. How do you know which one is cold and which one is blue? So, I am less familiar about blues. I have to really Google blues, but okay. cold blue or like warm blue. But like reds are really good. So like look, uh, look at like um, your alizarin crimson. Sorry, get your alizarin crimson and your red blue. See how much like, like a lot flatter, a lot more brighter, a lot brighter. It's like scroll. It's scroll. Like so, get a piece of scrap right here, and I guys like. If you guys don't have scraps, I highly recommend getting a pencil scrap. Like, cast out a lot of things. I cut my pencil scraps. Oh, okay. from from my um, So, I have a lot of She has her own Stay away from mommy's very expensive things. <laughs> yeah. 
That's 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 right. This is warms and these are cold. Okay. And you see how these would be warm because it's like the tone is this a lot warmer. And this is a lot, yeah, these are a lot warmer. These are a lot colder. See how they go crisp? There, there's a good function. See how they go like crisp and very blue screen? And then these are very like warm and summery. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I guess do you see that? Yeah, I see that. Okay. I don't see what you mean. I wasn't sure what you meant about cold or warm. Yeah. So you chose the way. And you can always tell because here's here's a way that you can absolutely always find out if it's warm or cold. Look what happens. I just when I blend um, have you made that? Then watch what happens. See how that's right? See how that's really bright? Yes. You try, if you're mixing your color and you find that you're getting really muddy and you can't get away from that, it's because you're mixing a warm color and a cold color. So if you mix warm and warm, cold and cold, your color is way more rich and powerful. Which, this is not bad. This is good for dark shadows, right? You can, I can totally see this being a shadow color. Could you? Yeah. To this color, even. Right. Yeah, right. So this is color theory. Color theory is a beast of knowledge. <laughs> yes, yes, I see that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yep, yep, absolutely. So, uh, the way you can do that too is kind of like create uh, like one line of like warm colors, one line of cold colors, and then just take a flat brush. Like go all the way across with each color, and then once that's dry, go all the way down with each color, and then it'll show you how they're going to and see how each color looks. It's a good way of doing it. And then you can also go even further with that and add white into them, so you can see what they'll look like together, or paler, or black. Or Exactly. Right, but they're I still warm, other. warm, and, and cold. Even Correct. though you mix uh, white, white and, black. and black. Correct. Okay. Yes. Because white and black are shades, mm -hmm. they're not colors. Okay. Okay. Nice, guys. Uh, Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about your style? I like the color. Oh, is that right? Uh, really? Yes. Yeah. And it tells them that I would go for what it is. So, like, go in and just really like wet all this uh, and then add some more uh, layers of dirt. Yeah, it's dry right now. Is it starting to make sense to you? Okay, cool. Wow, perfect. Any questions for what kind of Okay, it's not going to be able to read this quick. Sure. And don't wait for me because I'm going to want to Feel free to like take your own steps because as okay. you move forward, wow. you start to integrate this information a lot better. Yeah, yeah. You can even like, um, start, yeah, if you have some scraps, experiment with them. Like, Play with them, mix the color, play with them. The more you experiment, the more you're going to return. Does that make sense? Yeah. How are we you doing? Know, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry if you're so frustrated. No, it's okay. This is good. Yeah, I really like this. I love the rich. Clearly, I'm going to get that. 
Yep, and it's the same process as with the mountain. You just build and build and build. Okay, I think that I'm going to add a little bit of <clears throat> my yellow ochre now that I'm coming back to it here. Just more of hints. And believe me, we all have bad days in our learning experience. There were some times where I showed up to class and I was like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> That's part of the process. And pushing through that really lets you know whether it's a passion or not. Okay, I like my sky now. I think I'm happy with it. Um, it's subtle. It's, it's good for now. Yeah. I might just go a little bit darker up here. Okay. I have to stop. I could play with the sky forever. <laughs> okay, so now I'm allowing that top part to dry. I'm going to start moving in to this foreground right here. And I'm looking right here, and it looks like it's kind of wet on wet underneath. Same here, it's wet on wet. Um, and there's a lot of blues. So I'm going to mix again, two shadow col colors. All right. So I'm going to mix like a very similar color to what the, my mountain shadows were. Um, cause I just used it up. So I am taking my cobalt or ultramarine blue. In that same area. I'm taking, hold on, what happens if this is an experiment for me? Oh, nice. Okay, so then I mixed it with a bit of burnt sienna until like, now it's more of like a slate color. And then I'm gonna warm it up a little bit with some alizarin crimson. Blah. Um, happy with that. Alizarin crimson. It's like my pink warm red. So I have this. I'm doing the bluish tone right now. Um, and then I'm going to add my burnt sienna over top of it 
as well as I'm going to add some of my cobalt blue over top of it as well. So I'm just first going to wet this whole thing. Now I'm gonna come in with my shadow colors. Okay. Creating a nice base. Hi. No, that's fine. And again, I'm working really light. Like I'm not going in super dark because um, when you go too dark, you can't really lift up all that well. And then I'm going to go in with some burnt sienna and especially, and I'm being pretty generous with my burnt sienna. I really want the red brown to like pop through. No problem. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my cobalt blue. I'm really going to allow. This is a lot darker than I thought, but let's roll with it. I'm going to kind of do the same thing on the other side. This is just like a base. This is basically, um, we're creating the layer that's going to be bleeding through. Again, for all of these pieces, they're just our layers that are, uh, they're just the base layers, if you will. They don't have to look perfect and they can be whatever you want them to be. So I'm going to add my burnt sienna to the top of this one. So it looks like it's getting quite a bit of light. And then I'll add my cobalt blue more underneath. That's good. Yeah. 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 I'm 
So first time I'd like to wet the brush, right? I really like to wet my paper. So I'm going to separate the paper with the paint with the paper. Okay, first time. And then I go over, dry it off, and then using my slug, I'm brushing the sponge. You could even add some yellow. That will like help oh, nice go. Okay. Well, so things have the surface is that color. We are working on building to that color. So I'm looking more at the like colors underneath because this is going to be built over top. Does that make sense? So I'm looking at these colors underneath everything. Yeah, like a burnt, so like your brown. Yeah, like a purple. Yep, and then even like a cold blue. Does that make sense? Use this color, that brown. How do you feel about it? If you have a good base painting that you can go over top with it, if your shoulder is hurting you, then you do a uh, like heat cold therapy on it. I think it's not the same. What's not the Yes, I have my partner has a fibromyalgia. Um, tens machines, incredible. Uh, it's a it's a machine that you like hook up electrodes to it, and, like, and it like sends like very delicate electrical shocks through it, and like wakes up those are the soul muscles. They're so good, I use it for my Really, just. It's very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Where does the other one? Tense machine? Wow. Well, let's give it to us. Do you shop? Do you do Amazon already? No. no. Yeah. Yeah, and you can find it on Etsy. If you're applying them in hangers, then you can get them to places like that. Where? Like the hangers. Oh, yeah. It's one of some jobs. Yeah. Thank you. You know what it's like? You know the direction for Dr. Hull? Dr. Hull is basically a hands machine. Oh, yeah. Yes, you know. Oh, yeah. The other hands machine does at some point. So you don't have to put it. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> nice. Okay. So then I love how wet this is. See how nice and soft that is? Yeah, that's very successful in your favor. Um, so now that it's still wet, you can go in with some blues and add some blues near the face. Because what's happening here is the sun is hitting it and then like the shadow is creating them here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can even use this. You can even use that color. I'm noticing that, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to keep the difference in shadows here to here. I want to see what it does. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. So now that I have all of my base colors and stuff, I'm going to start building up my mountain colors. Um, 
So I'm going to, I'm going to mix this darker purple right here and then like a Payne's gray. Yeah, it looks like a darker purple and a Payne's gray is what I'm going for right now. So I'm taking my ultramarine or cobalt blue, putting it in there. And then I'm gonna mix it with my alizarin crimson, my warm purple. Adding a hint. Uh, went a little too cold, so I'm going back with some alizarin crimson. That's a color that I like. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And now I'm going with a Payne's Gray. And I'm going to put my Payne's Gray here. So I'm mixing together my Ultramarine or Cobalt Blue. And then I'm taking Burnt Umber, mixing those together. just before it starts getting too green. So that's perfect. And now I'm going to take a little bit of my black. I think this is my black. We're gonna to go together. We're gonna to add black until I get a beautiful Payne's gray color that I'm happy with. Um, you know what, this went almost too green. So I'm going to have to add more of my ultramarine blue. There we go, that's nice and rich. Um, actually a little bit more. Okay, we got it, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to start building up these shadows, especially in like the ridges. So I know I could tell that this is kind of a ridge right here. And then it goes up. And again, I'm paying attention to what makes sense to me on my painting, not what makes sense to this, but what makes sense on my painting. And if you want those soft edges, instead of hard edges, take a wet paintbrush, dab it off, like a clean wet paintbrush, and then just kind of do some circles over that area and spread out that paper paint until uh, until it's nice and soft and there's like no hard edges. Does that make sense? But again, it's not necessary. You could totally go for more of a, a loose, type and that's I think what I'm more aiming for is I kind of think I'm going to want this to be a little looser but at this stage I'm still going in um fairly wet and and uh soft
A green? No, a blue and a purple. And then this ridge right here is going to be more of my, um, what do you call it? My, uh, what I just, Payne's gray, sorry. You know what? I think I'm making executive, an artist decision right now. I'm not going to look, worry about fading out my subjects and stuff. I'm gonna let this be raw and rough. Because my goal isn't to have, my goal is not for this to look identical to this. My goal is for this to look like my own version of that. Does that make sense? And I want these two colors to like mix in with each other. This one over here, I'm going to do a layer of this purple that I mixed. And then I'm gonna go, once that dries a little bit more, I'm gonna blend it. I'm gonna put blue over top of it. Oh my gosh, so dark. So instead of taking off this color when it's super dark, what I'm doing is I'm taking the water and I'm spreading it around so that it's not so saturated in one lone area. Does that make sense? Ah. 
Isn't he, um, like those Japanese oh, mountain, oh, misty oh, mountains? Well, yes, right this, this is Japanese. Absolutely. But your specific oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your land. Your land. Yes, we do. I think I mentioned this before, but a lot of what I'm trying to teach you guys is automatic. So, like, uh, right. Okay. Um, okay. But, like, when you did drive, you didn't have to be conscious about, like, I have to press on the gas, I have to press on the brake right now. I have to turn on my light signal. It's all automatized. So all right, thank you. Right. a lot of these process. processes for me, because I've been painting for 20 plus years, it's automatic now. Right. So um, this is why it's so important for you guys to like ask questions, especially if I feel if you feel like I missed something, it's probably I probably did because it's automatic to me, I'm not thinking about it. So, like, I really appreciate it when you guys ask mm -hmm. questions or ask me to elaborate and stuff. It really helps me. Uh, but that's the thing is that the more you become comfortable with it, the more you do it, the more it's going to become um, automatic. And these points where your brain gets to a point where, like, I'm done, it's because it's taken in way too good. It's taken in its full capacity of information. And it needs to. It needs to like store that in your like neural networks and stuff. And then once that's stored, it'll come back with uh, refreshed capacity. The nice thing about that is as you automatize a lot of these um, skills, is that your capacity goes from this big to this big to this big to this big because it's not working as hard for all these minute steps. This is very interesting to read. It's interesting that I can after the four weeks of art go to school. Amazing. Just like like all your life now to see this is the way to painting other things. This is the way you're going to start to express things like you said that you're wrong. Yeah. You're being not now not do Yeah. And all art practices, no matter what it is, help other every single art practice. Art is very interdisciplinary. Even if you're doing like sculpture, or if you're doing uh, like pottery, that's helping you train that visual spatial mind. 
and concept of knowledge of how it works. How it does like okay, uh, like you work more with sculpture, you're going to notice how shadows and how the light interacts with the shadows, and then you can bring that information into your painting to help things look more creepy. So so long as you're doing art, as so long as you're experimenting, you're just you're just going to learn. You know? All art is good art in the sense that you're going to learn something from it. I think it's the, it's the softer and sensitive way of a, a, a real rhythm. Yeah. And um, because we're, you're working watercolor, it is softer. If you were to work more like oils or acrylics, I don't know if it would be so soft. Yes, this is the base. Oh, no. Do you water down your acrylics? Okay. Yeah. I've I've never really done acrylics. I kind of found watercolor and then was like, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, Nusha is a fantastic teacher for acrylics. I love that. Yeah, and then you get um, you get a uh, uh, like an art history lesson as well. Yeah. Oh, so his uh, it ends up looking a lot more like gouache then, like very flat colors kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Through it? Okay. Okay. Marilyn, it's in your awkward teenage stage. It's in the awkward teenage stage. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Appreciate that every single painting you do will have an awkward teenage phase where you're just like, I hate this. Yeah. There's bits and pieces that I like. I think this is a part of your 
Yes, absolutely. That's what that's what next week's for. Next week is for really like getting into those like hard harder details. Leia's been with me for three sessions now. So she. I can give that you that information right away. No, it wasn't a lot in this session. No, it wasn't because. May 15th yeah. is when it starts. Is there summer sessions here? Yes. Okay. Yes. I wasn't sure. Some of my uh, community centers just shut down for the summer because everyone like travels and stuff. But they're smaller. They're smaller. Uh, so there's um, Ajipi over in Laval. Correct. Yes. So Ajipi over in Laval. And then there's the Contactivity Center in Westmount, which is in a church. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, really? So far, yeah. yeah. We haven't had a demand for enough, like, expert classes and stuff, yeah. Yes. Let me add some blue to this. Oh, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Yeah, this I just took off the computer, but that's my time. Let me put some blue. Yeah. Um, and so how, how could I go about it? Um, um, yes. Yeah. So if you add blue to the here, right. you're going to have to do a blue wash over top. Okay. Right? Just to make sure that, like, because the sky and the water are all going to reflect each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would do it wet. I would, since you have like these beautiful streaks going on, I would do wet on wet and I would like subtly add it in like maybe underneath and around these purple mm -hmm. since like the uh, the yellow is clearly like sunshine throwing through. I would add the blue like above or below the purple. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But I would make it like very, very wet. So I just put the wet in the areas where I wanted to do it. Yeah. Or no, you. I would do the whole thing and let it spread very soft. Oh, okay. And maybe work light and then add dark and dark as your paper begins to dry. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, um, I'm just keeping it there for now because I'm gonna put it in my bag. 
Okay. I, I, I would I would just rip off this whole piece and then just paint over it. That's what I'm gonna do it Okay. Sounds good. Studios. Um, I don't really know pottery, but let me Google it real quickly for you. Around this area, we're in the area. Okay, okay. So then I'm going to go. So this place is in Hoseville. Yeah, I see some of them. I'm happy to call people there. There's one that's a storage plant there. There's the Rosemall location and the Plateau location. So let's see what else we got. Uh, there's one here, Castle No Night. Yeah. This one? It's in Puden, not in Pudenish, but it's in uh, Castel No Metro, there's more Patrini area. Yeah, this place. Yeah, yeah. so this place has pottery classes. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay with that. That's nice. Okay. At the same time, they said they have a, a, a coffee shop inside the, uh, the place. I think I'm going to stay with that. Okay. We'll probably oh. class this too. I don't want to take them to the ring friend. Oh, yeah, you were doing the I like seeing that everyone is clearly finished for the day. <laughs> That's fine. To where? Bee fly? Bee fly. Ooh, I've heard of that. So if you went there because they have like the butterfly section, but they also have a different amount of Oh, cool. They can run and find each other just because you've got that in specific. Yep. But when we went to the butterfly, in the butterfly section, they were each given a stair with all of these butterflies. The butterfly, they had something to do. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely take my daughter. She sounds amazing.
I brought my daughter to the insectarium and she did not like it the first time because of the butterflies. She was like, <laughs> yeah. so we're trying to like slowly introduce it to her. She's three. Yeah, she's young. What museum? Fine arts. The book. Which would she not be bored? Oh, oh do they? Okay. 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 I will absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, last week was a really small class. This is a Okay, I'm not going to play you the Oh, no. <laughs> Another one here. And I'm sitting here. And it can't laugh. No. No, my daughter should talk about it. Would you like to leave them here or would you like to take them home? Yeah, I'm taking mine home. Oh, thank you. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's it's building up. It's because I'm really trying to um I'm really trying to save my lights. I'm like going out of my way to like really save the light areas of my space. Yeah, that's that's what I think uh, is super successful uh, within mine. Within Maryland's is like uh, within Dallas, it is flower, flower, flower. Lily, I'm Lily. Oh, you're Lily. That's the flower. And you're a rose. Me? No, you're a rose. No, no, no. So see how flat my look? We are going and keep going to the darks in our shape. Oh, yeah. so, 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 so I'm okay. Correct. Flat. Yes. Because I look at this and it has that. Yes, she yes. has got that in the next slide. Oh, that's okay. okay. So this is what's perfect. Our child is working hard enough. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so I'm going to take my tape off and I'm just going to reapply it next week. We not, might not even need to retape it just because uh, we're only like focusing on details. This week we really focus on like the overall washes. Yes, yes same. Yes. 